All right, well, open your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Titus. We're going through the book of Titus, verse by verse. And right now we're in chapter 1 and verse 10. And it starts with the word for. It says, for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. In other words, for because this is why... There needs to be pastors of congregations of believers. One of the reasons why. And that's because there's false teachers. God wants there to be true teaching in the world, not false teaching. We talked about Sunday at our, in our sermon from the book of Revelation how false teaching will have its fullest fulfillment in what the book of Re Revelation calls the city of Babylon. And it's false religion, which will be to point people to the Antichrist and to elevate the Antichrist and to praise the Antichrist and to influence people to worship the Antichrist. And they will. But God doesn't like that. As a matter of fact, that's why he will destroy Babylon suddenly and completely just before Christ returns to the earth. Yeah, the earth, the Lord Jesus will come from heaven right to the earth. And when he does, it'll be bad news for the armies of the Antichrist. And so it says, for there are many unruly and vain talkers. Unruly, that means they're in rebellion. They haven't learned to live under authority. If you're wise, you'll learn to live under authority. Some people call the age in which we live the age of rebellion. Revolution, resistance. Refuse, refusal to follow constituted authority. God has set up a hierarchy in life. He's at the top. That's why Jesus is called King of Kings. Everyone's under multiple hierarchies. Well, think of it as a citizen in your country. You have leaders in your country and they pass laws. They make requirements of the citizens. Christians are told to obey those in authority. As a matter of fact, it's my view that the Christians can be and should be the best of all citizens, no matter what country they live in. Some people live in communist countries, and guess what? That could happen to our country. In 1917, the communists took over Russia. They had Christians in that country that prayed that good things would happen to their country, and the communists took over. In 1945, the communists took over China. They had Christians in that country. Thanks to Hudson Taylor and other missionaries like him. They had Christians, many Christians, who prayed that good things would happen to their country. And it didn't happen. Uh, not the way they wanted. Now, good things have happened over time. Look at Russia now. Freedom for Christianity. When I was a young man and first become a Christian, one of the countries that was talked about the most as far as how much they persecuted Christians. Matter of fact, if you tried to go across the border in Russia and had one of these in your hands, you would be put in prison. And uh, guess what? Now there's freedom in Russia to pass out Bibles, to buy Bibles, to start churches. As a matter of fact, they may have more religious freedom in Russia today than we do in America today. What a turnaround. God can do. God looks at the long term. We as humans, because we're so limited, we look at the short term. Right now we're looking at the short term of, a, of an election. It might mean bad news for our country. It might. Uh, but think about the people in Russia and the people in China and other, co other countries that were taken over by communists. Venezuela was taken over evidently by cheating in an election. And uh, that's a terrible, terrible thing. But guess what? We're heading towards a situation where the Antichrist will take over all the governments of the world. God knows that. He's told us about it in the Bible. So don't be surprised if bad things happen in your country. One of the nice things to know is we're not in the Great Tribulation yet. We're still in the time of the Age of Grace. Good things can happen. Many good things in the age in which we live. God established our country through many miracles and blessings. God kept our country going through many miracles and blessings. There have been many Christians in our country. We sang a song of one of them uh, earlier, Blessed Assurance. 
Fanny Crosby, wonderful Christian lady who wrote hundreds and hundreds of hymns that have blessed the Christians in our land for many, many years. And God has blessed our land. He can do it again, no matter what happens with this election. And he can still turn things around because he's God. We put our trust in him and do the right thing. Always try, hope for, try to make the best outcome. And no, no telling what God will do through you. That's one of, the, one of the hopes of having a child. That child could become one of the greatest Christians ever. And God might do through that child things that we can't even imagine. That's why you want to bring your children to Christ. Do what Timothy's mother did for him and teach him. Teach that child, him or her, from a young age, the things of God. You never know what the Lord will do. But he has to do it through teaching, and God gives teachers. Jesus ascended on high, and he gave gifts unto men. Among them are apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors, teachers. And the, the Lord wants to build up the Christians in sound truth. they got to be teachers to do that. Yeah, there's many false teachers. That's what it says right here. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. They're vain talkers. The word vain means empty. They're talkers, all right. Talk, talk, talk. By the way, some of them are very good talkers. They're called charismatic. They have a personality and a smile and a way of coming across to people. That's amazing. People are attracted to them. People want to hear their words. They want to hear that talk. Remember, we had a president once, uh, the first President Bush, and he, he called the, before it was called fake news, he called them the talking heads. People that talk, 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 talk. They never do anything. But boy, can they talk. Well, the false teachers are like that. And they're deceivers. By the way, uh, what they're saying is wrong. What they're saying is not true. What they're saying, even though they claim to be religious teachers, is not founded in the sound doctrines of God's word that God's revealed to us so we would know the truth. They're deceivers. They take a false idea and they present it in, a, in such a way that if you don't know this book real well, you'll be easily attracted to what they teach. And it's happened a lot. Especially they of the circumcision. Oh, the circumcision's bad? Where's the word circumcision come from? The Bible. That's a Bible term from the Old Testament. Well, what's wrong with circumcision? Circumcision is a deed done, a work performed. It's a work. A good work. Yes, it's in the Bible. Yes, Jews were told to do it, but if you teach it in the wrong way, you will be teaching falsehood because the great teaching of the New Testament and of the entire Bible, if you understand the Old Testament, is that human beings are justified by faith. That's one of the great statements made about Abraham in the book of Genesis. Abraham believed God. And it, his belief, was accounted unto him for righteousness. His belief. In other words, a person who has no good works, they simply say, I trust in you, Lord Jesus. And then, that's righteousness. They're now a righteous person. Paul quoted that reference to Abraham in the book of Romans, chapter 4, the great book, on justification by faith. You put your faith in the Lord Jesus and you're justified. You're declared to be a holy one. You're given sanctification and righteousness as a free gift. You don't earn it by anything you do. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. And so those that teach falsehood will always teach that you're justified by your works. Remember the Tower of Babel? Come together and work and build this tower to heaven. That's it. That's the principle of false teaching, of false religion. All false religion teaches that. Some of official Christianity teaches that. Be careful or you'll think it even in your Christian life. You'll think when you do wrong that now you're in trouble because now you can't be rightly related to God because of your works. Your wor you failed in your works and therefore you can't follow Jesus. That's a lie. 
You can have daily forgiveness so that you can constantly stay in fellowship with Jesus. By the way, you're probably going to fail. Little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. It's a goal. That's the goal, all right, to do right. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. You always want to remember that. If ever I fail, I'm going to go to the Lord. You're going to have to have a lot of belief in that truth. If you believe at all that God is accepting you because of how good you are today, then tomorrow you'll stop following him because you're not going to be that good tomorrow. Guaranteed. If any man says that he has no sin, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. You will sin every day. That's the, that was the teaching of the foot washing. When Jesus said, you're clean, but not every bit. I still got to wash your feet. I've cleaned you because of your faith in me. You're clean. I view you. But your feet are, get dirty every day. And I'm the one who's got to wash the feet. And when I wash your feet, then you're fine. Right? And so as we walk through this life on the dusty roads of the Palestine he's given us, and our, we have sandals on, right? You got your sandals on? Your feet are going to get dirty because you're made of clay. You're made of this earth. And the earth gets you dirty. Your physical, fleshly life will cause you to sin. But when people teach that you're justified by your works, verse 11 says, whose mouth must be stopped. That's not the gospel. That's a lie. When churches teach that you're justified by works. How are they going to be stopped? How are we going to stop their mouths? Sound teaching. That verse needs to be quoted. Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. The verse needs to be quoted. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The verse needs to be quoted. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Notice it says in this verse 11, who subvert whole houses. You see the congregations met in houses. There's a good verse for demonstrating that. They met in houses. So the pastors were pastors over relatively small congregations, 20 or 30 or less people at the most, even when, when the massive numbers of people were coming to Christ. The congregations were small. But if you got the wrong teacher in there, the entire congregation, whole houses, the entire congregation would be overcome by that talker. That talker. Because they'll talk. And, oh, teaching things which they ought not. Why do they do that? Notice the last phrase. For filthy lucre's sake. Money. They know everyone out there's got money. And guess where they want that money to be? In their wallet, not in yours. That's what really motivates them. That's why many of these type people are super rich. I would look at the preachers, the teachers, and see how much money they got from their congregations. If they're living high off the hog and that money came from the believers, then uh, you might want to look at this verse. No wonder it said previously in this chapter, verse 7, the qualifications for a pastor not given to filthy lucre. Interesting term for money, filthy lucre. The love of money is the root of all sin. A lot of times with these politicians making the wrong decisions, we can't understand it. But those that know, guess what they say? Follow the money. Why are they not making the right decision? Why are they doing the wrong thing? Follow the money. One of themselves, notice verse 12. One of the false teachers, of course we're talking about the island of Crete here. Even a prophet of their own said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Slow bellies mean lazy. They lie. They're like animals, not spiritual at all. And they're lazy. And uh, well, you know, you could go into any community and there would be certain characteristics of that community. What's happening in, in America has happened to other countries, especially in Europe. It's becoming a secular country. What you could say about America is, wow, these are people that don't have many spiritual thoughts. They don't know the Bible very well. And they've got all kinds of excuses why they're not going to go to a church service. I mean, they've got them all down. There's a lot of excuses. 
Uh, and uh, but everyone needs to hear the true teachings. That's why you need to go to a good church. God, Jesus established the church where Christians would go. They would hear the gospel. They would hear sound doctrine. They would have a pastor who teaches the word of God. Who set that up? Who designed that? They would pray with and for each other. They would sing the songs of Zion together. Whose idea was that? Jesus. Jesus did not establish an athletic team. He didn't establish a political party. He didn't set up a lion's club or a moose club. He set up what he called the church, which means those that are called out. They're called out from the world to gather together in the name of the Lord. Well, anyway, notice what it says in verse 13 about this saying that came from a false teacher, by the way. The saying from a false teacher is written down in the Bible about the people of Crete. And then Paul, by the Holy Spirit, says in verse 13, this witness is true. Well, that's one of the things that makes the false teacher so attractive. Some of the things that they say are true. What if they say, the sky is blue and it's so beautiful. Can a false teacher say something like that? Sure. Can they expand on that? And everyone loves the words that they say and everything they say about that subject be true? Yes. That's one of the things about a false teacher that makes them so deceitful. Some of the things they say are true, but not the important things. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Some people need to be rebuked. How will you know who to rebuke and who to talk gently to? You, don't, you won't know unless the Holy Spirit guides you. Some people need to be Talk to about the love of God and that attracts them. That attracts them because they want to be loved. And if God's love, then they want, they want to know more about that love. But some people will be attracted by the message of judgment. I was. The thoughts of judgment. One of my strong emotions when I came to Christ was, I'm going to go to hell if I don't get saved and I don't want to go to hell. The message of hell is a truthful teaching. Yeah, it can sound harsh, but it reaches some people. I remember a testimony of a woman that when I was a kid, she was a young girl, the brother of my best friend. She was like 10 years younger and maybe not quite that much, maybe uh, yeah, about 10 years younger. But anyway, I asked her a couple years ago about her salvation and she said she got saved because she was and she was an ornery little girl <laughs> quite an outspoken little girl with quite a sharp tongue on her but anyway one day she was having a discussion with her older sister and one of her brothers walked by and heard them and turns around and says to the young girl you better stop doing that or you're gonna go to hell and that made her she said that made her want to get saved that sharp answer from her brother that's when she got saved and accepted christ as her savior and that's what it says here uh, wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith verse 14 not giving heed to jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth interesting that it says jewish fables you know, the Jewish re religion is a, is a true religion, the Jewish religion. The problem in the first century is that when non-Jewish people became Christians, a non-Jew became a Christian, they were told what, by the false teachers, you have to become a Jew now. You can't just be a believer in Jesus and not become a Jew. And it was largely Jewish people that taught that, that weren't saved. They thought that everyone to become a true believer and worshiper of God had to be a Jew. They were wrong. Guess what? The opposite is true, though. Did you know that Paul took a Jewish vow and went into the temple many years into his ministry? Described in the book of Acts. I've never done that. Why not? Did you know that Paul wanted to go to Jerusalem during one of the feast days so he would be in Jerusalem during the Jewish feast? Why did he do that? 
He was a Jew. Is it okay for a Jew to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles? Sure. Nothing wrong with that. What about if that Jew's a Christian? Can they celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles? Of course they can. I don't do that. Why not? I'm not a Jew. In other words, you can be a Jew and a Christian at the same time if you understand the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. If you understand the difference between law and grace. A Jew, when he becomes a Christian, might be cast out from his family and other Jewish people because that's considered a big no-no, of course. But that Jew himself doesn't have to stop becoming a Jewish person. They can still celebrate Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. They can do that. It's fine. I don't celebrate those days because I'm not a Jew. But anyway... Jewish fables, oh, that, that implies they had added teachings to the Jewish religion and uh, things that weren't taught in the Bible, they didn't understand. That happened with a lot of times in Jesus' life. You know, he was told that when he uh, picked corn out of the fields on the Sabbath day, why well, you're violating the Sabbath day, you're working on the Sabbath. And he said, no, I'm not. It's never wrong to do right. There's never a day in the week where it's wrong to do a good thing. That's how I interpret that. If it's right to do something on Monday, it's right to do it on Sunday also. Somebody asked me that this week. They said, well, you probably don't go to the uh, store on Sunday, do you, because of your religion? I said, no, it's because I don't want to drive that far on Sunday to Walmart. To me, all days are the same. And uh, he, he, I think he was surprised at my answer. But Jewish fables, fables. Here's the truth. Anything that's not taught in here is not true. There's a religion that I disagree with greatly. It's called the Mormon Church. I don't even call it a church in my view. They have fables as an important part of their religion. They have a separate book, even. Uh, that would fit right here. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. Some people give heed to those fables. Oh, I love those fables, they'll say. I love those stories. I worked with a guy who was a Mormon. Nice guy. Every Mormon that I've known is a nice person, human, humanly speaking, of the ones that I've known. But he'd given heed to Jewish fables. He even told me he likes the Book of Mormons more than the Bible. There you go. There's a modern day person. He's fallen into the same, same problem. Oh, those talkers are good, aren't they? And so he says, uh, And commandments of men that turn from the truth. The false teachers have the commandments of men, not the commandments of God. And that's what makes them false. How are you going to know if someone's speaking to, are they speaking from the commandments of men or the commandments of God? what they're teaching come from this or not. Oh, you've got to be a good listener. You've got to have a lot of knowledge of the Word. Or someone will come along with an idea that's wrong and they'll be real good at presenting that idea and they'll get you. Yeah, it happens a lot. That's why there's so many weird, unscriptural ideas in many of these churches that call themselves Christian. And usually it will come back to works make you righteous before God. Like the work of speaking in tongues. If you do that work, you're closer to God and you're spiritual. Oh, really? I don't think so. And then we'll stop right here. And next time I'm going to read the verse. It's a wonderful verse. Verse 15 Instead of the false ideas of false teachers, what are the good ideas of good of Christians who know the word? Verse 15. Under the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Well, one of the wonderful things of knowing Jesus as Savior, your conscience is cleared through Christ. 
It's a wonderful thing to know that all your sins are forgiven, to have a clear conscience, a good conscience. Uh, many people are burdened by a bad conscience. Well, let's pray. If you don't have a good conscience, you can pray to Jesus. You can ask Jesus to come into your heart and he will save you from your sins. Let's pray. And Lord, we thank you for everyone that's praying. If anyone hears this sermon, Lord, and doesn't know you, we ask that they would pray to you and receive you into their heart, O oh Lord Jesus. We thank you for this sermon, and we thank you that next time we can look at the book of Titus again. Please give us wisdom and understanding. Help us to put your word into practice, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.